Well, how's it going, YouTube? Well, I hope everybody had a happy new year. First of all, I want to start off by saying thank you for everybody that subscribed to my channel. Um, this is going to be a layout update for the month of January. Um, not much going on in the layout. I'm also going to show my way of making a great crossing. Just mix it up a little bit, and at the end of the video, I'm going to show you what the layout looked like in 2014. History on this layout, I started about four years ago and sometime about beginning of 2015, end of 2014, I tore about half of this layout apart and replaced it with what is currently here. So I will show you some of the old video I have of that portion of the layout. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, so let's get started with the quick tour and then we'll be right back and I will show you how I make grade crossings. So anyway, uh, only thing that's really gone on is I put the little holders for the little tabs in. Um, as you can see, that is the end result. Uh, came out pretty nifty. Uh, we'll move over here to the riverside area. Um, got it. I think I showed, I showed it to you guys last time. Got it all scenic in. Um, put some ground foam a little bit on the yard. Overall shot of what it looks like. Uh, put some trees in and some palm trees and so this background building I secured it by using some hot glue so that's about it for here So anyway, um, as you can see, I am currently working on my downtown area. Let me move my big hand out of the way. Um, all I use for my roads is some hardboard or depending on what part of the country you're in, some masonite. I use hot glue to glue it down to give me the rise that I need. So it's there's somewhat level to the rail. Um, if I don't want, if I want this rail higher, then my buildings to show some elevation I will just put the building straight on this so first thing I do is I cut the masonite it's about two and a half inches wide I make my roads and then I make the base for the buildings and I'll put the sidewalk on later um, fill around with sculpt and mold uh, I can put the this part right here where the joints are in the hardboard I use this right here so if I can get in the video, DAP dry spackling paste. I also use a trusty old putty knife and a sanding block. So, all right, the first step I do is I put some sculpt mold down. Um, I've kind of already started this, but I put the sculpt mold down. I make it below the rail on either side. I don't get anything, try to get not anything in between the rails. That way my, my trains won't derail, especially with the end scale, you have so little tolerances in end scale. Um, then I, once sculpt mold dries, which lately we've had a lot of rain in Arizona, so it's taken a couple days to dry. I sand it down really quick, which I've already done, and then I take the vacuum and I vacuum it up. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to smooth make it look like paved concrete using the spackling paste. So I use the spackling paste that is like turns white once it's dry so I know it's dry. So all I do is I just grab a gob of spackling paste out of this little bad boy coming across just like this push it up against the rail if I get it up on top of the rail I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to sand this all down to where it's below the rail again I'm trying to avoid getting the spackling paste into the rail or on the other side of the rail I should say and I usually try to gob it on it takes me a little bit of time to do this so I will do one and then I will Finish this up, the other one's up, show you the finished product. But again, I'm just right now just filling in the spackling or using the spackling paste 
to make a smooth surface. Now, it doesn't matter if the road is not level, because if you really look at a road today, it roads are not always level. I mean, they got dips and bumps and junk in them. But anyway, this is what I make it look like. Try to smooth it out, nice little incline. I will let this dry. Once it's dry, I will come in and I will take some, I will take my trusty sanding block here, right here, and I'll smooth it out to where I will get a contour like I have. Let me see if I can, yeah, it's in the camera. I've got over here. So that is the process of my way of making a paved road. Um, you can there's plenty of techniques out there to do it. This to me is the easiest way. So I will finish up the rest of it and show you what it looks like once it's completely spackled and once it's dry. So I will be right back. All right, YouTube, I'm back. Um, put the first phase in or the first coat. As you can see, I did get some right in between the rail. So what I do is I clean off as much as I can. I'll wait till it dries and I'll go in with a um, either a toothpick or an X-Acto knife and I will smooth that out. Um, as you can see, it kind of looks kind of rough right now, but I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit more. And then once it dries, I'll smooth it out some more with the spatula. You may have to put two, three, four coats on here depending on how thick you're going to go with it. Um, like I said, I like using this stuff better because it's easier than uh, plaster of Paris and not so messy, as messy I should say. Here is one of the roads on the far side near the Paris area that I've managed to smooth out as much as possible. I don't know if you can tell, there are some divots and stuff. Once I get that sanded down with the sanding block, you won't be able to tell. Um, I still have to put another coat of spackling right in there between the rails as you can see it's kind of deep so um reason i say three or four coats is because of spackling if you put it on thick it creates big old holes like that and it doesn't look like a real road but anyway the end result we are going for is right there this was done the same way using the spackling and the sculpt mold so hopefully this area right here will look like the area I just showed you. So anyway, I will be back hopefully with once this dries, um, I will show you how I sand it down and then I will show you how I paint it and how we how I will get the end result. So um, all right, so the spackling paste is dried down. Or it's dried out and now we're going to sand it I've kind of done the other ones um, I don't know if you guys can see it but I'm going to show you how to sand what I do to sand this down now I usually sand both sides lower than the rail due to the fact that when you go over with your bright boy if it's even with the rail um, the paint is going the bright boy will usually scrape off the paint of your your road or whatever your paint and stuff so again, we take my trusty little sanding block. Doesn't take that long. But you're just gonna basically smooth this down. And I take the I take the sanding block and I kind of run it against the rail to get this part of the road lower.
and I take a paintbrush just to move the sand or to move the excess joint compound away and voila there's a brand there's a nice smooth little road some parts right here I'll just sand down a little bit more to get a little bit more even just like that come over with the brush again now if I run my finger along here it's still kind of high so the next thing I do I'll take my my trusty exacto knife right here and I will carve along the rail just to get it started And basically what I'm doing is I'm shaving away the edge of the rail, the, the joint compound and everything from the edge of the rail. And then I take a, a spatula and I basically run it along the rail a couple of times. And I'm basically getting a little, the rail higher than the road. Try to keep the spatula flat so you don't get a divot in the road. Just like that. And then I'll come in with it like this way. And I'll rub it up against the rail. Do that a couple times to the point where I need to have it. I want a little bit more deeper than that, so again, I come back over with the spatula, give it a little pressure. Now, once I do that, that's complete. I go back again with the sanding block along the rail, like so. And that is done. I'll take the X-Acto knife, make sure everything along the rail is off. And there is your road. And you just basically vacuum up the excess block and get it painted. So I will be right back and I will show you how I, what color paint I use and we'll paint it. So let me get this thing vacuumed up off camera and we'll get back to this. All right, now that we've got it all vacuumed up, I put a little grain in there and a little container. To paint my roads, I use Folk Art Medium Gray for my roads because I just feel it gives it a good color. And I have three different size paint brushes. I have a, a somewhat small one, one that's got an angled one, and a large one for the large areas. So basically, we are going to paint. I'm going to show you how I paint this road. So, and then I'm going to move the camera just a little bit. So, this is the area we're going to paint right now. It's pretty easy. usually takes one to two coats. Um, first start off by getting along the rail. I like to go thick with my paint. If it gets on the rail, I don't worry about it because, like I said, the bright. Once I run a bright boy over it, it will take care of that. I don't worry about straight lines either. I try to get them as straight as possible. But if they don't come out straight, I really don't worry about it. Like I said, it's going to take 
two coats, maybe three to get this looking the way I want it to look. But I just put a lot of paint on my paintbrush and paint away, let it dry. First coat looks the worst because it's covering up a lot of the you can still see a lot of the white that shows through like I said I don't worry about the rail because like I said the bright boy will take care of that and this doesn't take I use acrylics because they don't take very long to dry so it's part of the reason Plus it's cheap and only like a dollar or so over at Hobby Lobby, maybe less than a dollar. Um, get them at Michael's. I don't get them at Walmart because Walmart never has the right gray. Now there are parts on here that I will have to touch up with some joint compound. But that's no big deal because I can always paint over the joint compound again. Alright, so we're going to let these two things dry. And then I will put another coat on there and I will show you the end result. All right, here is the finished product. Let's see if I can get a close-up shot. This was about two to three coats later, and as you can see, the entire road is painted down, ready for road striping. I've got the access road right here. That'll go to RJ Frost, all completed. As you can see, when I ran the Bright Boy over the road, right or the rails right here, this little spot right there, the Bright Boy dug into the spackling and the sculpta mold. I went ahead and left it, makes it look like a pothole. If you don't like it, you can always take a sandpaper or sanding block, sanding paper, and sand this down some more, then repaint it. Uh, only thing that needs to be done to these roads now is to put the wooden grates in here like I did before like I did on my other stuff um, and I you guys are interested and want to see how I do that um, leave some comments on my YouTube page on this video and I will sh make a video on how I do that so basically I'm putting that that's made out of balsa wood and just painted up with some acrylic paints so I will show you how I, I do that together. So anyway, stay tuned for the next part of the video.